Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to AP Stats. How's that for an opening? Huh? Um, we're going through chi-squared stuff. We're in unit eight of the suggested units for College Board. It's chapter 11 in most of the practice of statistics books. And if you need a copy of these notes, they're down below. I've got a link to the three-week review that we do for the AP exam. That's worked really well for me and Christina Mellon, who is the other person who um, I work with. And again, all of this stuff is not my lessons. I've kind of tweaked it from what Statsmatics has done. So be sure to check them out as well. So what we're doing in the second lesson is we're taking a look at the M&M &M &M data that we took before. And so as you can see, I've already filled in all of the information over here. Let me do it that way. Um, and so then from there, what we're going to end up doing is then we're going to kind of more formalize it today in four steps. So you guys have it all down under, pad, under control. Okay, so there is our observed values. Those are the expected values. Yesterday we discovered that the blue ones, um, the blue M&Ms were kind of the big problem child, as it were. And our chi-squared statistic was 25.7. And we said that's, and we found out that that's much higher than what, um, well, what you'd expect if everything was going the way it should. So for checking conditions, you need to check to make sure that the M&Ms are randomly selected. Okay, um, we have a 10% rule. And so that 507 M&Ms is definitely less than one tenth of all M&Ms out there. Now, since we're not talking about normal distributions, we're talking about a chi-squared distribution, we don't need to check that yet. And we're going to talk about what the actual, we're going to kind of do an informal write-up now, and then we're going to move into a formal write-up on page two. Okay, so this one's, but this lesson's going to probably be a little bit longer than what you normally expect from me, and that's even with me talking fast, so anyway, my apologies. So for large counts, what you're going to end up doing here is that you have to make sure, again, remember that all expected values are bigger than five. When we did proportions, and this is kind of a proportion issue since that's why we're, you know, we're bringing down what percentage of things are working on, we needed to make sure that we had at least 10 in the success and 10 in the failure categories, right? Obviously with more categories, because that's only two, success and failure, now that we're having five, six, seven categories and stuff, that number shrinks down to five. I can't say for sure that's the reason why they do it, but I'm saying that that's kind of the thing to have in the back of your head. So five is the minimum of each category saying that you kind of have a large enough sample to be able to do a chi-squared test, right? So calculating out the p-value, so remember for the degrees of freedom, we always go one less than the number of categories here. So, so the degrees of freedom here, since we have six colors, would be five. The test statistic is 25.718. Three. And if you look up in table C, like we did in the previous set of videos, you'll see that it's less than 0 0.0005 um, probability that what we're seeing would happen by chance. Beginning of zero hour. So anyway, um, and again, you can use your calculator. There is a TCDF, which we'll talk about coming up. Um, so making your conclusion here, we're going to say because our own p-value is less than, uh, which is a value of less than 0 0.00. I missed a zero there. You guys deserve better. I'm sorry. I know you guys have a lot of choices for your AP videos. So since that is less than 5%, which is our alpha value, we reject the null. And we have convincing evidence that the claim distribution of M&M &M color is not true. Okay, so that is our conclusion. Um, or actually, it's kind of, well, yeah, it's kind of our interpretation. So, and then the one other thing that we need to talk about is who's the problem child, as I like to say. Which number was off by the most? And so the blue caused, let's go back up here, this gap right here with the blues, okay? Red is close, green is eight off, that happens. Orange is really close, brown is really close, yellow is off by 20, but blue is off by this almost 50. And so that has the largest influence on our chi-squared test, or chi-squared value. So because of that, that's the reason why the test kind of failed. So, well, let me say that again. It had the most influence on why the null hypothesis failed. Okay. So let's do this formally now that we kind of have our head around with what's going on. And we're going to state our hypotheses. Again, not a surprise. And again, it's always going to be the claim distribution is true. The claim distribution is not true. Significance level, just like before, you can have whatever you want. 5% is still kind of your best move. And then we're going to move into, doo -doo 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 -doo, name it, chi-squared. And this is called goodness of fit. 
because we're trying to say, does our data fit what we're expecting? Is it a good fit? And we're going to talk about what some of the other chi-square tests are in subsequent lessons. So check in the conditions we kind of just did. So here are the formally what you're going to end up doing here. So you're going to say random stated, ideally quote what you're doing. I was kind of pressed for time when we were doing this in class. 507, is, and so this right here allows us to, remember random allows us to take it off to the entire population. 10% assures independence. And 507 is definitely less than one tenth or 10% 10 of all M&Ms. And multi, the milk chocolate M&Ms, I was told that I needed to make sure I said that by my class. And then large counts. Now for this, large counts, everything has to be bigger than five, okay? Um, one of the things that you can do here is that you're always gonna look for the smallest, okay? So all expected counts is bigger than five. And then in fact, you could even just say something like this. So you would say the smallest equaled 65.9, and that's definitely bigger than five. Okay, so you don't have to check all of I mean, you check all of them, but you only really have to state that you check the smallest one. Okay, because obviously if the smallest one works, then all the bigger ones are going to work too. So moving in to the do. Now the picture, the chi-squared test, remember, chi-squared is this skewed right setup. Make sure you have your picture, you have your value. Up over here, you've got um, the chi-squared and what your degrees of freedom are. Okay, so instead of saying normal and, um, you know, standard deviation and all that other good stuff, that's what we're going to do. And then over here, specific formula, chi-squared. Remember, this is summation. That means you're going to add up all the different times this happens. So observed minus expected squared, all divided by your expected value, and you're going to add up each of those. So we had six in this case, so we're going to have six different calculations that we're going to sum up. In terms of your work, okay, and this is one of those things that students tend to be like, this is a lot of work, do I have to show all of it? You can kind of get away with some of it. And by get away means that you show what your setup is. So like here, notice what we ended up doing is I showed the first two so I could show the pattern, dot, 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 showed the last one. Okay, so that's always helpful. Um, and then from there, we get our number. So our test statistics is 25.7. Your p-value is 0 0.0005. And again, you can either say table C or you can say TCDF. Just make sure you label out your parts. And then down over here, because the p-value which is less than 0 0.0005. See, I got it right on this one. Um, that way. Don't worry about it. I should mirror this, but then my part would be different. And yeah. We reject the null hypothesis and have convincing evidence that the M &M, the milk chocolate M&M color distribution is different than stated. So there's our conclusion. And the four-step process is missing a couple of things. A, it's missing the general formula. It's missing a parameter, and it's missing the statistics. Why are the parameter and the statistics missing? Right. I mean, we're doing categor categorical vari uh, variables here. So we're just totaling things up. So it's a little bit different. All right. So that is the basics of chi-squared goodness of fit tests. We're going to pause it here, load up the next video, and we'll formalize it all. There'll be an example there, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.